Rick, can we talk FISBOs? I know you have extensive experience with FISBOs, and it seems like they really cater to your strengths. So, you know, it's really weird, Joe. When I first got into the business, um, one of the hardest things for, especially somebody new as a real estate broker, is to get a listing. Okay. You can work with a buyer, especially a first time buyer, because they don't know as much as you do. Okay. But to sit down with somebody at a table and they say, well, Rick, how many homes have you sold in the area? How many listings do you have? And you've never had one. It's pretty difficult to transition into that. So I was driving through a neighborhood one day. I saw for sale by owner sign. I grabbed a flyer, called the guy, asked him if I could come over and meet with me, let me list his home. I sold it and I've been hooked on that ever since. Here is a consumer that has a sign in their yard and it says, I want to sell my house and I don't have a broker. That's some low hanging fruit. However, you, there's a way to approach them and a way not to approach them. And there's dialogues, there's techniques, there's a lot of different things that you can do. And those are the things that over my career, I've, I've, you know, I've constantly strived to work at to, to get better at and working with that segment of the market. And to me, there's just nothing more satisfying than creating something out of nothing. If you get a referral or a past client, that's one thing. But when you have somebody that says, I don't want to use an agent, for whatever reason, I've had a bad experience, I've done this before, I can't afford to, and you can convert that and convert that client and show them that not only can I probably net you as much, maybe even more money, and gain your trust and loyalty, and you can see that real estate agents, we're not the enemy, we're, we're on your side. And approaching a FISBO, what's the best way that you found out to approach a FISBO? Well, there's a number of ways to do it. Um, obviously, for sale by owners have uh, uh, certain ways to promote their house. Uh, there are websites out there that they can advertise that are for sale by owner websites. Zillow is a big one. Okay, Zillow uh, has for sale by owner and they also have what's called Make Me Move. Those two segments are people trying to sell on their own. Okay, and Craigslist, a lot of for sale by owners post to Craigslist. So you can uh, check these websites daily. I check, usually check them daily, see who's maybe some new for sale by owners coming onto the market. You see for sale by owners that have listed, okay? Statistics show that the majority of for sale by owners that want to sell and aren't, are having difficulty doing so will eventually list with the broker. And timing is key in for sale by owners. So, um, you got to watch that. And so basically, uh, you can watch the websites. But the biggest thing that I think uh, is beneficial to me is for sell by owners typically will have open houses on the weekend. That's how they get people in to see their house, just like we would. They do an open house. Well, what's wrong with you knocking on their door during the open house? Hi, I'm Rick. I'm with Brokers Guild. Is it okay if I come in? I immediately identify myself as an agent. Is it okay if I just come in and look around? And 99% of the time, they're very friendly. They'll smile and say, absolutely, Rick, come on in and look around. And that's how I approach them. Wow. And once you go into an open house, you have your friendly approach, you identify yourself, you look at the home, do you follow up pretty frequently after that or get permission to follow up? Well, one of the things that's key is before you go to the open house, there's preparation. I don't go into that open house without all the sales activity, trying to do a little research on the neighborhood, knowing what's going on in the neighborhood. Uh, most of the time, uh, for sale by owners are very good at embellishing their own home. So you read what they've done to the home. So I've got some information and I actually, if there's not a buyer in the home at the time that, um, that I'm in there, I try to spend some time and, and ask some, some leading questions. Okay, I'm, and my one is, I like to use is, I'm just curious. I'm just curious, why are you selling by yourself? Um, did you have a bad experience with a broker? Actually, they, there are basic reasons most for sale by owners will give you. We've done this before, that's very common. We've done this before and it worked. We've had a bad experience with a, a broker or brokers. We can't afford to pay a commission. We're having a home built and we're not in a hurry. Those are the ones, we're not in a hurry. We've had a bad experience. Uh, we've done this before and we can't afford to pay. Nine times out of 10, a for sale by owner usually will give you one of those four reasons for, 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 for selling on their own. And so what you need to do is develop the dialogue to talk to those people and say, okay, let me see if there's something that we can work out and make this beneficial for both of us. Because they know you're there to make a commission. 
So if they say, why are you here? My objective is the same as yours, to sell your home and force to both get paid. There's nothing wrong with telling them that because yeah. they know that's what you want to do. Uh, just be honest with them and don't lead them into believing you've got a buyer if you don't. That, that's a big one. I, a lot of, uh, if you call for sale by owner and you or say, I'm interested in coming over and looking at your house. If you have a buyer, that's one thing. But if they say, well, why do you have a buyer? Don't tell them that you've got a buyer. If you don't, they can read right through that. And once again, you lose trust. Okay. So you say, you know what? I don't really have a buyer today. However, I've been doing this for a while. And I pick up new clients on a regular basis. I'd love to see your home. There's not a lot of inventory in your neighborhood, and it looks like a really nice home. Can I come over and take a look at it? And if you just approach it like that, typically my, my experience has been that they're willing to let me come over. I don't call them if they're doing an open house. I just show up. I just show up with information and, and ready to talk. It sounds like you have a lot of adaptability because you're finding out their motive, you're having conversations before that, but even to backtrack again, you're doing your homework, you're not showing up and letting them see that you may be a novice or maybe your first listing for some agents. Sure. By doing that homework and knowing builds authority and credibility, then you can ask questions about the house and have that genuine, those genuine conversations. Now, how long have you followed up with a lot of FISBOs? And you got the listing. Well, in my opinion, it's I think it's changing. I'm I'm seeing for sell by owners holding on longer than they have in the past, and I think it's because of their the the fact that Zello is out there and it's become such a powerful website. And they can advertise on it and they can monitor their views. Yeah. Okay, and they can do multiple open houses. I used to list for sell by owners. If you didn't have a week to ten days, they were listed usually. Two weeks. You know, anymore, it's not uncommon to see for sale by owners uh, 30, 60, 90 days still advertising on Zillow. I see that. So you've got to be willing to follow up. So I have a series of follow-up emails that I'll send, and I'll track a for sale by owner for 60 or 90 days or until they list. I don't, I'll continue to email them, call them. Um, sometimes they'll have a second open house. Maybe six weeks down the road, you've already been in to see them. You've sent them a couple of follow-up emails. Maybe you made a phone call. Maybe you stop back in again and say, hey, guys, I noticed that you were had another, another open house. Um, do you have a minute to talk? Now, you don't want to go over there and say, well, I wanted to tour your home again. You've already been in and seen their home. Yeah. And if there's nobody over there, uh, if you see cars in the front, probably not going to work because there's people in there. But if I drive by for sale by owner, maybe that open house was from 12 to 3. And I get over there at 10 minutes to three. Chances are probably most of the traffic's gone. You know, they're getting ready to come out and take their sign down. You pull up and say, oh, hey, guys, I was in the neighborhood. I just saw you had an open house. Do you have a minute to talk? They're going to know right off the bat why you want to talk. Why beat around the bush? Why are you there? You're there to try to get their business. Just say, hey, I noticed you guys have been doing this for a while now. And are you getting any closer to maybe thinking about using a broker? You know, I've been in your house. I followed up with you. Uh, you know, I told you I was willing to be reasonable on fees. I know that's important to you. You guys have got a minute or two to sit down and talk. Never hurts to, to have that conversation. These are conversations that a lot of agents are not comfortable having with people. But once you've done this for a while and you realize these are just the average consumer, th there's no reason you should be afraid to have that conversation. Again, it's basic. It's very basic. And I, I like the point you made about FISBOs. They're an amazing source of leads, sign in the front yard, they're holding their hand up, they're saying, you know what, I wanna sell my home. I wanna sell my home. And you just have to get them over that hump of hiring an agent. And there's, what's NARS stat right now, 80? It's in the 80 percentile range. And, and the, uh, the other stat is that realtors get a significantly higher price than the for sale by owners do. But you've got to develop some dialogue. And, and, you, and it can't sound canned. But when they yeah. say, we're not in a hurry, that's a good one that I hear. Well, we're not really in a hurry. I'm, not, I'm sure you're not. However, you've got a sign in the yard, you're advertising on Zillow, on Craigslist, on Trulia, and you're doing an open house today. So there is obviously some level of motivation here. So see, you, you diffuse that, okay? We've had a bad past experience with a broker. Well, 
I, I'm sure you have. There are a lot of realtors, just like in any industry, you can have a bad experience. However, if you'll give me a few minutes of your time, I'd like to show you there's an opportunity to have a good experience, okay? We can't afford to pay a broker 6%. Okay, how much can you afford to pay? What would you be willing to pay? What's wrong with asking just basic questions like that? We've done this before. What market was that in? You know, was that here in this market or when was that? Because, you know, things have changed over the years. And do you think you saved money by doing that? Um, did you discount the property since you didn't use a broker? And if you did, did you discount your savings away and take on all that liability yourself? I mean, there's and there's what, but you don't want to challenge them. I think the mistake a lot of brokers make are they say, you need a broker, you can't do this on your own. And that people are still doing that. Mm -hmm. That is not going to work in today's market. Do not take that approach. Be a little, be casual, relaxed, lay back but have your dialogues and your scripts down and interject it in your conversation in a way that it flows and it doesn't sound like a canned dialogue. Yeah, because what I hear with, when are you going to hire a professional? You have to have an agent who says, I'm incompetent, I'm stupid for trying, I'm going to fail. It's like creating more resistance. But I like how you mentioned... Yeah, I'm just, I'm just curious. Why are you guys doing this by your... And let them tell you. Let them tell you. Just shut up and let them tell you. They will let them do the talking. Okay. Sometimes they think we want to talk about what we know. Let them talk, and and they'll tell you. You know, or they just bought the house a year ago, maybe, and, and now they're being relocated. Okay. The bottom line is, um, and it's hard for the consumer to accept this, but we know this in the industry that the majority of qualified buyers are working with an agent. Okay. Well, when you've got your for sale by owner sign out there, if you're not willing to at least co-op with a broker, you just cut yourself out of about 90% of the market. So now you've got this tiny percent of the market to work with. And most of those guys that would shop with a for sale by owner are looking for a deal. So how do you, how do you save by selling by owner when you're looking at such a tiny percent of the market that's looking for a deal? What about qualified buyers that are willing to pay, that are working with an agent and willing to pay market value based on MLS comps? Okay, so I think when you can, and, and most of the for sale by owners, I'll say, well, where did you get your sales data from? Well, they're getting, it, they're getting it from the sold comps in the MLS. Why are they doing that? Because those are the highest prices. Realtors get the highest price. That's why they're using our data. So you subtly interject these things. And then the other thing that you talk to them about is who's your title company? Okay. And have you, re have you prepared any of the state disclosures? Who's going to write the contract? How much is your attorney going to charge you? Who's going to hold the escrow at the top? Earnest money. You create doubt in their mind because they already have it anyway. You suddenly create a little bit of doubt to, so that in their mind, they're thinking, maybe this wasn't the best idea. Okay. Um, and, and so, I think those are the techniques that have worked for me in the past. And you're taking small steps. It's small you're... steps. Yeah, you don't hit them with that all at once, and you don't even use it all the time. You Whatever is ap applicable, you have that dialogue handy, and then you can pull it out and use it when you need it, okay? It, it sounds... It's not as easy as it sounds, but it's better than yeah. nothing. It's better than walking in unprepared, with no dialogue and just trying to hope you get lucky. Our business is not about luck. It's about skill. Every now and then you can get lucky. But in my experience, the majority of the time, successful brokers are skilled, not lucky. I always say I can get lucky in the middle of the highway, standing in the middle of it. It's true. Lucky with not getting ahead. And my chances of getting smashed like a mosquito on the front of a semi. Yes, it, it, <laughs> it could definitely happen. Yeah. So, but for sell by owners are are, are a great uh, source of of, um, of income that you can make. Not just not just the income, but I, I have a story that I can say. Many many years ago, when I was new in the industry, uh, the for sell by owners would have to advertise in the newspaper. Uh, we didn't have the internet, you know, and so I saw a newspaper ad for an open house, and I went over and met this couple. And they said, Rick, we're, 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 in, we're in a jam here. We, we bought this house. We're flipping it. We, we fixed it up. And we, we paid too much. We bought it directly from the owner. And we're in a jam. Help us. So I worked them a deal on the commission, found them a buyer, got it sold. 
And so they decided to start doing some more flips. So I, they would use me as their buyer's broker. And then when they got ready to list it, I would be their listing broker. And they, and, and, through a process of about five years, they would refer family members to me, friends to me. And after five years, we sat down and counted one top night and they, they, we, I had 40 transactions with these people. Wow. Either directly through them, a family member or a referral off of a one for sale by owner. So my point is this can be a great source of business for you if you develop it. Yeah, and don't trust luck. Have a process. Have a process. And you, I will say this, you probably are going to have to be flexible on your commissions. If you're not willing to be flexible on commission, I'm not saying you have to go in there and be the lowest. I'm just saying that, first of all, why are they selling by owner? Because they're trying to save money. So most of the time, you don't go from FISBO to a 6 or 7% listing. You go from FISBO to something that works, okay? What is that is different for everybody. And I'll leave that up to the broker to figure out and sit down and figure out what the best source uh, or what the best fee is. Uh, but one way to analyze it is if you're a broker and here's how I analyze it. Let's say that you like to work with buyers. How much is involved in working with a buyer by the time you drive them around in a car and you have gas and wear and tear on your car and your time and you write a contract and the deal crashes and you're back in your car. Now, whatever it makes, let's say you got paid 3% on that buyer. Did you really make 3%? No, you didn't. Not when you factor in your time and expense. Let's say you work with a lot of relocation buyers, you people moving into the state. Relocation companies take 35 to 40% of your, of your, of your commission. Let's say that you're farming, uh, uh, geographic farming, and you're sending a thousand postcards into that farm area every month and you pull a listing and maybe you make 3% on the listing. Did you really make 3% when you factor in all the money that you spent farming and developing and cultivating that lead with a for sale by owner? You have a phone call and a drive to their car. That's all the expense you've got. So maybe you had to discount your listing a little bit to get them, but you still maybe probably made just as much money as the guy down the street did doing those other things. Maybe you're at a traditional company that takes a 30% split. You have to charge more. The firm that I'm with, we don't have all those fees. So I'm able to pass some of that savings on to my consumer. But you have to sit down and analyze how your money is and what works for you. What is your business model? Some people don't want to be known as a discounter. My opinion about real estate is it's a cash flow business. It's a cash flow. You have to generate cash flow for your business. It's not so much about percentages as it is cash flow. Okay. So I tell new agents, don't get hung up on percentages. Although we tend to quote percentages, figure out how much cash flow you need. And if you want to convert it to a percentage, that's great. But you have got to generate cash flow for your business. Our market is changing. We have all these discount brokers coming online and, and 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 direct to the consumer buying from large companies and so we're going to have to figure out ways to, to combat that and deal with that no one likes a dried up pipeline no it's for sure and then, so yeah treating it like a business i hear you saying by having that cash flow and knowing your numbers absolutely that's a and great source of leads from fisbos have a process know your numbers and then just copy and paste and Repeat, repeat, and it sounds like the people skills, we can learn certain things and then just go out there and try them and, and develop those. So it's more of a snowball effect versus getting rich with one deal that just shows up on your doorstep. And you know, one of the things that I teach new agents is that there's no growth without discomfort, okay? Now, let's just face it, there's not. So if you're not willing to step outside of your comfort zone and go talk to some for sale by owners and ask them some questions, it's, it, how are you going to grow your business? I mean, that's just one aspect to growing it. But, you know, just in any business, whether it's real estate, whatever kind of business that you're in, in order to grow, sometimes you've got to experience a little discomfort to, to, to increase your level of professionalism. And that's how we do it. It's true. No pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. I, I'd rather have the growth pain and then the not doing nothing and losing pain. I would rather go over to somebody's house and sweat bullets and get business than to just not, not go through that process and not have the business. Yeah. So, so picking up the phone to call somebody, 
and worrying about they're going to hang the phone up on you. You wouldn't be the first person. People are bombarded. They don't know you. They've never seen you. You don't take it personally. You have to learn to disassociate yourself from that response and move on. Definitely. Thank you, Rick, for talking FISBOS and all the other knowledge you've divulged in this conversation. I believe it'll be really helpful for any agent, any agent that's looking to leverage this or looking to leverage this in a different niche other than FISBOS.